turns. All right, so what were we doing? <laughs> All right, so we want to be able to click the segments to be able to select them. Um, I think the the most important thing to do <laughs> is to uh, to make it so that the user can tell that the rectangles are click clickable. Um, I think we should be able to like CSS this, right? So if we just do like class name. Uh, and we'll do, there we go, that. And then we add the segment label. And we should be able to add some CSS. Hey, and Copilot did it for us. All right, so now, there we go. If we hover over the segments, the little ones are hard to hover over. But that's why we're gonna be doing zooming and stuff. But yeah, so we can, we have a little pointer cursor on the segments so we can select them. All right. <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, but we want to actually be able to <laughs> click on them to be able to, uh, you know, interact with them. So we can, we should be able to do like an on click. Hey, look, it's an on click. Uh, let's do this though. Let's, let's add a handler here. Const, uh, handle, no, handle segment click. There we go. Should it pass in the index? Yeah, we should be able to do that. Does this code look right? So if selected segment indices includes index, then we remove, we filter out the index from it, so this becomes a toggle. So that's what this is doing, right? So if if the thing that we're clicking is already in that in the the, the list, we filter it out. Otherwise, we add it to the end. So that seems okay. Um, and then what we can do is now if we go over here, it's like oh you could have on click that calls handle segment click index. So I think that should maybe even work. So now we should be able to click and unclick the things. All right, so now we can remove our fake, uh, our, our test data from our hard-coded uh, situation there. Um, and then the last thing we need to do Uh, is call on change with the selected segment indices. There we go. So if we provide this on change um, prop to the component, which we're not doing right now, but if that was provided, then it would get called when the user interacts with the timeline. So that's that's all well and good. That should work. You probably want to actually like have some kind of tests <laughs> for that, uh, but I'm not going to bother right now. I'm pretty sure that'll work. And if it doesn't, we'll fix it when we get to the point where we actually need to use that interaction. Uh, so that's selecting segments. If we want to zoom in, how's that going to work? So we have um, some data here scale zoom uh, and we have handle wheel which theoretically should change the zoom value this is this is some interesting math i'm curious what that's all about but um so we have handle wheel if we were to uh, look at the console let's filter out errors and warnings. 
There we go. And XHR. Don't need to see any of that. So we go over here and I scroll wheel. Hey, look, there there is a handle wheel. Um, but you can also see why there was a, we commented out. Yeah, but there was a prevent default here. So that, um, so let's do this. Let's see what this does. There was a prevent default so that if we try to scroll while I hovered over this, the page doesn't scroll, I think was the intent. So we'll see if that works. So if I zoom in, ah, hey, look, zoom in works. Now, it doesn't look like the prevent default actually worked though, because we're still scrolling down the page. Um, Hmm. Okay, so on on wheel. Let's see if Google's working again. Wheel events. This is something that I've I've not really used. This event replaces the non-standard depreciated. Uh, deprecated mouse wheel event. We have Delta X and Delta Y and Delta Z and Delta mode. Mm -hmm. So event that prevent default. Scale me with your mouse. Hmm. Let's try something. If we zoom down, if we scroll down the, the page a little bit, and then we scroll up, the page still moves. It shouldn't though. Shouldn't prevent default, prevent that. Stop propagation. That's a thing, right? Prevents an event from bubbling up the event chain. Is that what we're missing? Stop propagation. Not looking promising. Ignoring prevent default call on event of type wheel from a listener registered as passive. So that's the problem. I'm glad I looked at the warnings. Oops. I don't know what I just clicked, but. It's not the right thing. Uh, there we go. Prevent default on call. Prevent default. Okay, so I think prevent default is what we want. The issue is that handle wheel. We have on wheel. Ooh, on wheel capture. Aha. Try that. Uh, I was so hopeful. Maybe if we refresh, shouldn't matter. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, let's 
clear all those. No, ignoring a prevent default call on event of type wheel from a listener registered as pass passive. Oh, no, Firefox is frozen. <sighs> so we can, um, I did see in the docs, we can uh, hook onto the events a different way rather than using the prop. If this doesn't work, it's just rather annoying to do it a different way. Uh, because we would need to, um, where is the timeline component? Oh, there it is. All right, so on wheel capture calls handle wheel. Handle wheel is here. No, I don't, I don't think there's a point of doing a breakpoint there. So the, the, the scrolling does work. We can zoom in. Although I think we'll have to figure out how, how exactly we're zooming. Um, What's the difference here between on wheel and on wheel capture? On wheel capture react. Mouse wheel events in react.js. Yeah, I don't care about any of that. So we have documentation, synthetic event. We can try stop propagation as well here. See if that works. It does not. Hey, Foxy, how's it going? That, that's what I just asked. <laughs> It's going good. I'm trying to figure out why something's not working, but that's just how it goes, right? I can I can zoom out. Although also we should not be able to zoom out further than the length of the, the video. But it scrolls the window too, and that is not what I want. Um Hmm. Okay, so what we can do, we have a ref, timeline ref. So instead of using on wheel capture to get a hold of that event, what we can do is use effect to, uh, to manually hook onto it. So we're gonna, we're gonna borrow some of this code and we're going to do our own thing. Yeah, there we go. Nope, 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 none, none of that. There we go. And that. No, I don't want segments. Okay. Glad things are going good. Are we, uh, are we on for some, uh, Baldur's Gate? on Discord later? Is that still happening or? I need to get some lunch going here at some point. Uh, yeah, so we do want to check to see if, so timeline ref is what we, we created up here. We created a, uh, a ref, which is basically like a handle for the underlying um, DOM element for our SVG graphics. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, Hey, if, um, this use effect, so basically when the component loads, 
if we have the, the, the reference, the handle for the SVG element, then we're gonna do uh, window dot, yeah, that one. There we go, and passive false. Awesome. Uh, and this is not happy because argument of type event yada 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 is not assignable to parameter of type event listener or event listener object. Type types of parameter events in EVT are incompatible. Uh huh. SVG, SVG elements. That's interesting. Okay, window event map K. DOM content, device, device orientation, none of those things. Wheel event. Oh, right, not window. Timeline ref at current. Now, still not happy, but hopefully it'll give us a, a more relevant error. Type wheel event is missing the following properties from type wheel event. Okay, so if we look at the type for add event listener here, you can see it's SVG, SVG element event map sub K. Okay, element event map, okay, that's not super helpful. Can we, can you tell me what the type is supposed to be here? Wheel event. Ah, right, so it's not the React event type anymore, it's just the general DOM event type uh, uh, interface. Passive false. So I wonder, I don't think we need stop propagation here anymore. So if the hot reload worked, there we go. So we can scroll in and out a little bit. Only one level. <laughs> Why? Probably because the uh, the event shape is different. So what is inside a wheel event? Uh, it doesn't tell us. Okay, let's console log or add a debug statement. to our event handler, handle wheel, there we go. So obviously this is being run because it's calling set zoom, but probably like event.delta y or whatever is not a thing or it's, it's a different kind of thing. So event here has a bunch of stuff. Uh, it has wheel delta, wheel delta x, wheel delta y. Wheel Delta seems fine to use. I think that gives us a sense of like how much scrolling has happened. Uh, and so we could use, interesting, it says that there is a Delta Y here. Yeah. Negative 228. So if I zoom in some more, negative 228. If I zoom in some more, negative 228. What is the, um, so zoom is one. Zoom is one. Why? Hmm, okay, interesting. Let's do this. Let's uh, try to figure this out a different way. So this value is kind of our zoom factor. And so we'll say const zoom factor will be uh, the thing we just Cut. 
And then what we can do is we can do some console log here. To see what that value is. And that'll be a little bit more interactive rather than like seeing it in uh, in the debugger, right? So we can try to zoom in. It's always 1.228. Uh, and if we zoom out, then it's a, it's a smaller number. But it seems like it's not cumulative. Like that number, like if we're zooming in, then the value for zoom should get bigger and bigger and bigger. Why is it not? Why is set zoom not working? Interesting. I'm I'm seeing the control tab does a thing. I didn't realize control tab lets you switch between buffers in, uh, in VS Code. All right, so if we zoom in now, so the zoom number doesn't change. Wait, why are we getting zoom factor and then zoom zoom factor? Oh. So, what's going on? If this use effect is being executed when the component is uh, mounted. But, um, for our benefit, React will, in development mode, mount, unmount, and remount the component just to um, trip us up, no, just to make sure that we are handling the case where the component is unmounted. So what we need to do here is that uh, we need to do this. We need to return a function that's kind of a, an unwinding um, so that when the component is unmounted, React will call this code, which will remove our event listener. So now, maybe this works better? Mm, we're still logging multiple things. Let's try refreshing. Maybe the, uh, the uh, hot module reload is causing problems. All right, now we're not zooming at all. Oh, now Firefox is, is, is frozen. Let's give it a second to recover. Uh... Oh, that's looking promising. Yeah, but zoom is not changing. Like the zoom factor is there. You can see it's console logging a bunch. And if we zoom out, the zoom factor changes going the opposite direction, but zoom doesn't change. Why doesn't zoom change? It's also interesting, like, obviously something's happening in the UI that's causing, you know, something is changing. Uh, like if we look in here, the scale is there and that's from zoom which means whatever's going on when we're logging. Okay, okay, yeah, so zoom is always one. We multiply by the zoom factor. It sets the zoom, but this code doesn't see the new zoom value. It doesn't see the new zoom value. This sees the new zoom value. Why is that? Hmm. Like 
like you would think this function is closing over zoom. Zoom is coming from use state here. Um, why don't we see the new value? Huh. I think there's something going on there with this interaction, right? Because we're using a like a raw DOM event, right, to handle this wheel. And we're but we're trying to interact with the state from the hook, the use state hook in that callback. And that doesn't seem to want to work. Uh, which feels like something that kind of makes sense. Like there's probably something we need to do here to like bridge the gap there. Do we need, um, Do we need handle wheel to be in the dependency list for use effect? I wouldn't think that would be something that would affect what thing. Oh, there it is. Uh, so why why is that? Why is that that way? I, th I think I understand that, right? So again, all of this code gets potentially run multiple times um, on render, which means handle wheel could get redefined multiple times. And those will have different, those will be different functions, right? Each time. Um, so if we call handle wheel, but it's referring to the old function, then that old function is a function that's closing over a, a zoom value from a previous run of the, the like rendering of the component. So that's why we're, we weren't seeing the new zoom value because we were using a closure over a different zoom value. Um, and we have to tell use effect if we have a dependency on something else in the component. Yes, okay. That at least makes sense to me. So other things we need to do to make this nice. Um, the zoom value should be capped at one. Like it shouldn't be bigger than one. Right, so we shouldn't be able to zoom out. Like, what is the zoom value here? Uh, it, okay, so it shouldn't be smaller than one. There we go. Uh, and we can do that here by using math.floor. We don't need that console log anymore now that we understand what's going on. Uh, math dot floor yeah one save Turns the greatest integer less than or equal to its numeric argument. Oh, right, right, right. No, 
that's not, uh, sorry. Men. Obviously. This, no, sorry, Max. Yes, Max. Yes, even more obviously. The larger of the two values. Um, I think that's right. Oh, Firefox is frozen again. Should probably look into that. Maybe it's something to do with the, like 20 different browser windows with 100 different tabs I have open at any given time. That might be it. It might be all of the data and all these different tabs inside of this UI right now. Maybe it's some of my extensions. Who could say? Who could say? All right, but we can zoom in. And we can zoom out all the way out to out to here. So we can see the whole timeline and then we can zoom in. Now the thing we want to be able to do is we want to be able to zoom in based on where the mouse is. Uh, and that has to do with panning, right? We want to be able to pan. Let's, 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 let's do that. Let's do kind of being able to click and drag the timeline first, and then we can maybe figure out how to make the zooming work. So what we want to do is basically kind of the same exercise where we were uh, doing the CSS for uh, selecting rectangles, except we want to use, uh, I think the group here. Yeah. So I'm going to do something like uh, class name. Uh, not root, maybe like uh, timeline, we'll call it. Of course, that name doesn't exist yet, so we'll add that. There we go. And then we'll add some styling for the timeline. Uh, we're going to uh, have a different kind of cursor. Grab, is that a thing? It likes to think it's a thing. I don't think it's a thing. Oh, maybe it is. It, it's not doing anything. Maybe we can't style that. What are our options here? Uh, grabbing? Not a thing. <laughs> uh, move? That sounds... Why? Okay. So those are all things, but we can't, um, that's too bad. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, uh, just all on the whole SVG cursor grab. Yes. Okay. We can do that there. And that still allows us to click uh, and get the, the right cursor for the segments. Okay, so never mind. We're just gonna put that there. Save. There we go. All right, so now we have the cursor. That's the most important thing, right? Uh, just the, the, the thing that tells the user that, oh yeah, this is something I can grab and move around. Now what we need to do is we need to have um, something to, I don't think on scroll is a thing. I don't think this is the right thing. Uh, we're, we're just gonna get rid of that. What we wanna do is we have something that um, handles dragging, clicking and dragging. On, click on change on drag will this do the thing I want I don't know I don't think I've really ever done this sort of um, it's been a long time anyway 
probably the last time I've, I've done this sort of UI work was when I was using D3. This is before I even, maybe before I heard of uh, React. All right, so we're gonna change this to be handle drag. Get rid of all that. We got a drag event. We're gonna do some things. Uh, we're, we're gonna get rid of that. We're going to uh, console.log. Something like that, sure. Uh, and then we might use scroll X. Well, well, we'll do something else. Maybe. Hey, brainless. Uh, so confusing to set up multiple SSH keys to talk to different GitHub accounts, but finally got it working. Yes. Yes. That is a thing. I think I've had to deal with that once. <laughs> that I think I feel like that would be a whole ordeal to try to recall how to do all that. What are we doing right now with uh, Scroll X? Oh, yeah, we're, we're using Translate. Okay, so maybe maybe that'll be a good uh, a good thing. Let Let's just see what our uh, console log says. Should be easier. Oh well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so if I click and drag. Does nothing. Uh, let's see. Okay. So handle drag on drag. Huh. Okay. How about some Googling? Uh, React on drag. How to use, uh, da, 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 not getting called. Oh yeah, draggable trip. It does not help. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. mobile compatibility. Draggable true, undrag start. Well, let's let's start with a thing. We just gotta try things. Draggable true does not exist on SVG element. Well, that's not it's not promising. Um, what if? We did this here. Okay. Div does not have a. Uh, oh, right. It's the wrong type. Oops. Oops. There you go. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to change. Let's move this up. So, hey, look, it's draggable <laughs> in a way. Oops, console, drag zero, 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 zero. Okay, cool. Um, handle drag, what if it did on drag start? Okay, that's promising. Right, because now we don't have the... Uh... Hmm. So presumably we do... Like that handler only gets called when the dragging actually starts. 
So in other words, the only thing we're gonna see in events is stuff about it starting and not anything about the duration. Cancelable true, client X, client Y. Interesting. So then can we do I could go find an article, right? I could go research how to actually do this, but it's it's kind of more fun just to try things and see what we can make work. It's thinking on drag over? No. Um, is this what I want? I think so. Well, not drag over, but I want something where I can detect, you know, where we clicked and we're holding and we're moving the mouse back and forth for, for a pan effect, right? Let's uh, let's do a little, a little googling. So on drag start, MDN. Drag start event is fired when the user starts dragging an element or text selection. It's cancelable and may bubble up. Okay, and then uh, there's also drag end, drag enter, and drag. So the drag event. It's fired every few hundred milliseconds as an element or text selection is being dragged by the user. Mm. I think that's probably what we want. So we have drag start, we have drag. Store ref on the drag element for drag start. Drag end. Drag over. Drag leave. Drop. Hmm. So if we have drag start, so what I noticed, right, is that we added draggable and added on drag, and that did add a behavior where we were getting like a uh, a shallow copy of our SVG that we were dragging around. I wonder if we add on drag back. Whether we'll get that same thing. Okay, so let's add a, a handler. Handle drag, event prevent defaults, console log. That's good. Uh, did we save it? Did we do the thing? On drag, handle drag. Prevent defaults, drag start. Hmm. I wonder if there's a separate drag start event. I guess not. Interesting, interesting. So we have a drag start. We don't have a drag console. Maybe uh, let's try refreshing just to make sure that nothing is miswired. As soon as Firefox is ready, of course. Hmm. While well, we're waiting for that, uh, let's check message. Uh. <laughs> uh. Oh. Hey, Firefox. 
Firefox is back. Uh, someone's giving me a hard time in a different Discord. Not the community one, but that uh, I have four monitors, and can I not use half of one to have Discord open? Which is funny because I do actually have half of a screen with Discord. It's just I have to remember to look at it. All right, I think we want to get lunch going is the thing. All right, invite sent, let me say. <laughs> invite sent. All right, so, uh, right, back to coding. We have a drag start, but we don't have a drag event. Probably because there's something that we need to be doing in drag start for the drag event to happen. Uh, which is a drag. <laughs> uh, let's see. React. Drag. Event. Pan. React zoom and pan with draggable elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're using like a, a draggable component. I don't want to do that. Can't I just do it myself? Sure, it's not going to be mobile friendly. No, I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't want to do any of that. No, thank you. Pan gesture. Drag selection. React native. 3D panning. Ooh, panning and zooming. Uh, oh, this is like a whole, what is this? Customizable React component for building node-based editors and interactive diagrams, that's cool. I'll use that for something at some point. Touch enable implementation of what WG drag and drop mechanism. I, I don't, I don't wanna do any of that. Can't I just have something simple? Gestures. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Dispatch pan, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like half the results or more are, are about React Native. Some stuff from tab nine. On drag start event at data transfer that set data. Sure, sure, sure. On drop, on drag over. I don't want any of that. I'm not trying to do drag and drop. I'm just trying to do drag. <laughs> React zoom pin, pan pinch. Super fast and lightning. Uh, super fast and light React NPM package for zooming panning. Okay. Transform wrapper, transform components. Zoom in, zoom out. Yeah, okay. What is the magic sauce inside of you? Look at all the files, I hate it. Ugh. There are no results for on drag in uh, in this repository. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, but that doesn't work. We're doing that. Well, I mean, we're not using the same function, but it doesn't matter. It still doesn't work. Handle drag. What if we if we if we don't do prevent default on drag start, then I bet it works. Let's see, because it does that. There we go. 
Yeah, then we have a drag. We'll have to figure out what the numbers are. But yeah, so if we don't do prevent defaults on drag start, then the kind of default browser behavior takes over. And that gives us this, but I don't want this. Um, so we need to figure out how to like prevent defaults, but do the things that it normally does. So uh, probably go back to MDN. MTN drag start. Oh, I'm also getting messages. You won't let you foxy. Sounds like the neighbor is doing some uh, some yard maintenance. I wonder if that's uh, audible on the microphone. I've actually been pretty uh, impressed with this this blue met, uh, blue Yeti that I bought many years ago. It's been pretty good on the, the filtering out background noise situation. All right. Uh, yeah, so drag and drop API. What's that all about? Sorry, I'm also trying to get some, some food going here. Alright. And one more click. There we go. Alright. Let's do it. Uh, HTML drag and drop uses the DOM event model and drag events inherited from mouse events. User selects a draggable element, continues when the user drags the element to a droppable element, and ends when the user releases the dragged element. Well, we're not going to have a droppable. Maybe. I don't care about this data transfer stuff. What I really want to understand is how to... Um, control the behavior of dragging. Define the drag image. By default, the browser supplies the image that appears besides the pointer during a drag operation. We can use set drag image. Three arguments are necessary. The first is a reference to the image. Can be a canvas or any other element. I see. Okay. So when we do that, oh, snooze that a little bit. Let's see if we can get ha have something working here. Operations permitted, copy move, link, copy move, all. I don't care about any of that. Drop targets. I don't want to actually do drag and drop. I just want to pan. <laughs> um, hmm. I guess then the, the thing I really want to do. This text may be dragged. Interesting. Um, ba, 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 ba. What was the thing I just saw before that I read and then I just completely ignored? Uh, set drag image. All right, give me something, Copilot. Just the empty image? Perfect. Now, what does this do? Okay, interesting. Interesting. I'm guessing that if we were to, to look in the console then, 
there would be a bunch of dragon. There we go. Okay. So that works. I would like for the cursor when we're dragging to not be like that. That's probably a matter of saying this is also droppable. I'm guessing there's a drop. Uh, nope. Okay. How do I... How do I... Maybe there's something else I need to do here with... Effect allowed? Interesting. Set data? What does that actually do? Adds the specified data. I don't care about that. Um... Drop effect, clear data, effect allowed, files, items, types. How do I control the droppability? Last drop zone, drop target. This div is draggable. Yeah, draggable drop zone target. Drag over. Add event listener drop prevent default. Okay, that handles the drop event. Yeah, this interesting. So what is it? Effect allowed. Copy, move, link, uninitialized, all. What if I did all? So I, I just want to control what the cursor is doing here. Drag over event handler. So drag over. Prevent default to allow drop. I see. Okay. So I don't think we need this. What we need to do is we need to handle drop, oh, drag over uh, on the same element, on drag over. Yep. Now that isn't the right cursor for what I want to do, but it's fine. There's probably, honestly, a better way of doing this. I just don't know, but that's that's how it goes. All right, more snooze ad on ads. We got a little time. I got a couple minutes before food gets here. So let's see. So we have the ability to drag. We have uh, some output here. What I really want to do is maybe just like console log the whole event because we need to figure out how to go from the event data that we're getting to how much to pan and which direction to pan to change um, scroll X. Dev tools, there we go. All right, so if I click this, so we can see an event and there's a bunch of data, so much data. Um, I just wanna get a sense of like what we should be looking at. Maybe it's like screen X, no, target, view, event phase, client X, data transfer, mouse cursor is interesting, not gonna mess with that though, um, is trusted movement X, Native event, uh, page X, screen X, and screen Y. I wonder if it's screen X. Okay, if we do this, 
Oh, it sounds like food's here. You get a lot of events. Probably each event, the values are going to be small. Hmm. I don't know if there's a good way to like extract out the movement from the event. I'm not seeing it. Like there is a movement X and movement Y. I'm not sure. Let's see if Copilot can <laughs> come up with something for us. So it, it does seem to think that the drag delta is movement X. So maybe this works. What will be interesting here, we are using scroll X to control the, uh, the translate of our SVG element. So maybe this will work. No such luck. Like if we were to inspect this, is that value changing at all? Translate zero. Okay. So whatever is going on there, it's not seemingly cumulative. Are we getting any kind of errors? Okay, interesting. Okay, so uh, I don't know. I think we'll have to figure out. I might have to do a little research uh, to figure out how to make this work. And then we can actually uh, get to the part where we take the video and, well, take the data about the video and make episodes. So that I'll have to wait until uh, next time around.